Hi guys, welcome back to H2O today. This is lesson 5D and we are still on the topic of discouragement. So uh, let's pray and then we'll begin today's short lesson. Heavenly Father, as always, Lord, we come to your throne. We come and put ourselves there at your feet, Lord. We ask you to guide us, lead us, Lord Jesus, shape our lives, shape us, God. Reach inside of us and change us, Lord, in ways that are pleasing to you. Help us to unlock those places in us, Lord God, that we cling to sometimes that we don't need to. Help us shake off discouragement. Put on that new man, Lord God. Teach us more how to pray. Oh, there's so much we still need to learn, Lord God. There's so much we need to do more consistently and just better. We come to you for these things, Lord, because you are able and we are not. Without you, Lord God, I just fail. I fumble. I'm lost without you, Lord God. So please, Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. So yesterday we left you with a cliffhanger out of 2 Kings chapter 4 and 2 Kings chapter 7. The first one out of chapter 4 about the widow woman having debts that she can't pay and they are coming to take her sons uh, to be slaves to pay the debt. You know, the old school way of debtor's prison and uh, you could go and in servitude work for someone to pay off your debt. Well, that's what's happening. And uh, she is at her absolute wit's end. She doesn't know what else to do. There isn't anything else she can do. There isn't. And have you ever been in that situation? I'm sure you have. I have. We've all been in situations where we absolutely, there's nothing else we can do. We are at our wit's end. And it just feels like doom and gloom, no way out, absolutely no way out, no answer. So here comes... Here comes uh, the servant of the Lord, and he wants something to eat. And she says, well, you know, I can make you something, might as well. Me and the son's just going to lay here and die anyway. We've got nothing else. Ooh, she had, um, she looked hopeful. Yeah, no, not so much. But she is still willing to give and to share with others, which I just find amazing. You know, you think she'd want to give her last cake to herself and to her sons, but she's willing to give to this man of God. And the man of God um, shows a miracle to her. But she is involved in the miracle. She has to go collect vessels. And she sends her sons out as well. Bring me vessels. Bring me. The man of God has said what to do. This is what we're going to do. And when you're at your wit's end, oftentimes that is the time that you are finally willing and at last willing to do what God is asking you to do. You got no other way to turn. And you know, sometimes we do find that at the end, when we listen to God, we find the solution. I wonder if we had just come to God to begin with. You know, we have shirts and we have expressions that say, when everything else fails, read, read the instructions. How about just reading the instructions? Why wait for everything else to fail? Why try five different methods that won't work? when God's ways don't ever fail us. I know, me, I'm, again, I'm preaching to the choir here. So she goes out and gets all these vessels, and we know the end. The Lord fills them up and they don't run out. God's ways, I tell you, we can't see them, but we have to trust that He has a way that's going to work. And then the other one out of Second Kings chapter 6 is, uh, you know, the battle is raging. They're surrounded by the enemy. Sometimes we feel surrounded by the enemy again with no way out, no solution. Nothing's going to fix this mess that we're in and we are doomed. And yet God, and yet God, the man of God says, pray and open his eyes that he can see. Because the man of God had already said, Elijah had already said, there are more for us than are with the enemy. So we need to recognize God and his army surround us. They are with us. They are for us. They're not forgetting about us. They're not going to be late. God will not fail. We need 
to really soak in that truth that we've been talking about this week, that God is able and for us and for you. You. God is for you. God is for me. So I pray that these passages have really encouraged you this week, that I pray that you're soaking up the truth of God's Word. Sometimes discouragement, it's very personal, and I can hug you and I can tell you to be encouraged. I can show you God's Word. I can show you what the truth is. But ultimately, I found for myself, going through all those years of discouragement, a lot of times I'd nod, oh yeah, I know, thank you, yeah, oh no, I feel much better now, Uh uh-huh. And inside, I'm like, yeah, whatever. (laughs) I did that. And I think there's some of you out there doing that, too. You're hearing these words, and you're nodding your head. Yeah, I know, I know. But inside, it's a personal place somewhere that you have to find in yourself like a light switch, that you have to find that switch, flip that switch, and decide, you know what? God hasn't failed me. God is right. God is true. He is faithful. And I am going to encourage myself with these things. I'm going to accept the truth, and I'm finally going to take these lies that I've been hanging on to, and I'm going to let them go. Drop them like a hot mic. All right, so today we're leaving you with some more reading to do, as we always like to do. Some more Old Testament readings, some more Old Testament stories. You're going to be in Daniel chapter 3. Read the whole chapter. Daniel chapter 6. Read the whole chapter. And then also don't forget to read Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a great day. Remember to pray. Take time to pray. Put on that new man and drop, drop, drop the lies of the enemy. Be encouraged.